Well, hello. It's uh, Sunday morning. Uh, I think it's been about a week since our last video. And uh, it's a nice sunny day. We've had some weather this week, so it wasn't an awful lot of time out here spent. It was very cold. And uh, I just wasn't in the mood. I'd rather be inside where it was warm. But it's warmer today. We're back out here. We're going to do a few things to our 87 Subaru, um, which has become known as Old Blue. Um, kind of stuck with it. So I've been driving it for the last week. Um, put a couple of hundred miles on it. And this is a car that had the overheating problem like we talked about in our last video. Guys, I have yet to see the temperature gauge in this car go over halfway. Um, we took it yesterday, me and a couple buddies, and we went to the U-Pick Salvage Yard. That's about oh, 30 miles from here. And uh, good-sized guys, you know, three of us in the car. We blasted down there and blasted back. There's a couple hills on the way and stuff like that. Nothing. Car performed flawlessly. Um, so I kind of thinking that our suspicion of this little deal on the front here, blocking the airflow off, may be the really the only problem the car has. Um, there's no fluids um, raising or lowering, like you know, coolant. Um, everything works just the way it should be. Um, I have found a few problems with the car. Um, the clutch doesn't work right. Um, we'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, the radio didn't work, which is a major problem. Um, so I have thrown another radio in the car that we got from the uh, little U-Pick yard yesterday. And that works fine. Um, the heater control, the little slide temperature thing on the dash, it goes up and down. That didn't work. So I changed that as well because I wanted some heat this week. But uh, that's about all we've done. Um, right now, money-wise, our total investment in the car is our... You know, we have our original $400, and uh, I think yesterday, I think I spent $102. So we're going to call it, right now, we're at $502 invested in the car. Um, and it's going well. And we haven't really done any cleanup on it as of yet. That, uh, I think we'll be doing a little bit of that today. Um, it's uh, it is pretty dirty, especially on the inside. Um, you know, it's just grimy and dirty, and you know, stains and you. So you know, I think today is a nice warm day. We'll be messing with some of that, but before we you know get into that type of stuff, let's uh, let's see what we can do about getting the clutch fixed in this thing. Um, I saw a problem with it um, looking at it the other night. The, uh, these cars have what's called a hill holder um, clutch. And what it is is the, the, the clutch is cable ac actuated. There's a cable that pulls it off and on. And there's a valve that's tied in with the brake system that, um, and I see if I get down in here. Just follow my finger. It's this valve right here. And what this valve does is it's it's like a hydraulic line lock. Um, it's operated by a cable. When the clutch fork, this thing, this deal right here, um, is pulled back, it pulls the hill holder valve at the same time and when you press the brake it's like a a little micro lock it, it hydraulically locks the brakes the idea behind that is you know you're on a hill and you can set set the hill holder and you don't have to sit there with your foot on the brake you can just basically drive away so it's pretty cool when they work um, but the other thing that the hill holder valve does in addition to you know holding the car from rolling back on hills is it's the return spring for the clutch arm. Well, the hill holder cable and a couple of other parts are missing on this car. They're just not here. Um, so somebody's gone down to the hardware store and acquired this spring, if you will, and uh, 
that's what they were using to return the uh, clutch pedal. It works, um, it'll get you by, but it just doesn't feel right. And if you notice even now, where it is, like right here, the spring is actually caught on that bracket. I had one instance where I pushed the clutch down and um, went to weave a traffic light and I just didn't go. Clutch laid on the floor and that's what it was. It was stuck. So it's not uh, really an ideal thing. It is the kind of thing that will get you by in a pinch. Um, you know, it does work, but it's not right. So as we were kind of picking around yesterday, one of the things that I did acquire at the uh, salvage yard is another cable and that's this little guy right here this is the this is the cable um, two little clips that hold it in there's a special barrel nut that goes on the end of the cable sorry about that and this uh, nut actually fits around a little rod that's on the inside of it and then there's a pin this pin goes through the uh, the clutch fork lever and that's where your cable goes through the end of it like that. So uh, let me get you guys set up on a uh, on a try. This is the heater control that I changed, which is you know, as you can see, it's broke. It's supposed to slide up and down and uh, kind of like that, but uh, it just kind of gets like that. So less than ideal. Um, I think we're going to salvage that cable off of this. And throw the rest of it in the garbage so it can hang out with the radio that didn't work, which we've already tossed. A um, couple other little pieces picked up yesterday. These pieces here, um, which are missing off the uh, door panels. They're little covers that go on the speakers. Um, we found a, uh, found a dash cover, dash mat cover for the car. I'll put in it, just little stuff, uh, floor mat for the driver's side that was missing. So I grab one of those. So just a little doodad stuff. Uh, but uh, let me get you guys set up on a tripod and we'll see what we can do about getting this hill holder working. Okay, the uh, first thing I'm gonna do, hope you guys can see halfway decent here. It kinda hurts it set up. I'm gonna take off this little support heat shield for the, uh, where the spare tire. Um, goes here. That'll give us a little bit more room. Maybe you guys can actually see a little better what we're going to do. Spare tire on Subarus, of course, goes under the hood. Um, kind of a quirky little thing they did on cars up through the uh, Legacy series. The Legacy's actually went to the trunk. They were the first one. So, but all these cars, uh, spare tires here, up here under the hood, right in this area. Um, and the older ones, oh, here goes that. But we take that out of the way. That'll free up a little bit of space for us. All right, I think, let me take a look here. I think I may, with that out of here, uh, I'm gonna readjust you guys. Hold on just a sec. Okay, that's a little bit better. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to put on some plastic gloves. One of the things I noticed over this area the drive axle is right down here underneath this and everything here is covered with uh, graphite grease which says that at one point in time fairly recently I'd say that the rubber boot on the axle joint here is probably ruptured throwing grease all over the place and because uh, the axle actually looks fairly new so let's uh let's get yeah see this is yeah let's get this off of here and uh, out of our way Don't need that. Um, I'll hang on to it. Like I said, this is the kind of thing it does work, you know, and probably would work for a long time if you I probably had a little bit better spring. 
it would probably work um, even better. But, uh, you know, let's do it right. Somebody's done some wiring here of some sort, it looks like. Um, there's a broken ring terminal sitting around in there. Okay, so hopefully you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go down here. Gosh, the wiring in this car is just... These uh, starter cables are typically up here. Um, we have to route this hill holder cable around on the inside of it. Let's grab the cable. Grab the cable and we'll put this down in here. It's kind of a, a little bit of a challenge to route these hill holder cables around everything here on the uh, intake manifold. You just kind of got to play with them a little bit, um, get them down in there where you want them. Just be careful you're not, you know, pulling on any wiring or hoses or anything like that. Okay, so now hopefully I have enough uh, slack. I think what I'm going to do before I, there's a little, little notch here and sorry I don't think you guys can see this really good but there's a little notch in here that the barrel end of the cable goes in and then the cable sits in, it drops down and the uh, cable sits in the slot. Get that in there. Get it down. Okay. So that's in. So now we'll pull our housing back. boot on the end of these cables. The cables are actually a pretty high quality little deal. The uh, cable is, uh, has like a plastic coating on it. Okay, that's in place. I get one little, there's a little horseshoe clip that holds the cable in position. Okay, so got all of our other parts here too. There's a little little horseshoe clip that holds the uh, cable in position, just slides over it and locks it in. Just, just push them down in with my finger. And now there, okay. Now, I'm going to figure out the rest of the routing for this thing. Like I say, it can somewhat, be somewhat of a challenge at times. It kind of goes up around here. Um, around the EGR valve. These, uh, these cables, um, a buddy of mine recently actually purchased one, and I don't recall, I think he got it from Subaru, and this cable alone from the uh, dealer was like $70. So, I think the, uh, So if it's like seventy dollars from the dealer, I think the um, you know I think fifteen dollars that we paid for it salvage is uh, actually a pretty good value. Um, 
long as it goes in and works the same way. I'm good with that. Um, So we got that through. A little, and then basically what it does is it goes in here like so. And goes right through there like that. So let's see how kind of check out our routing here. I don't think we did too badly. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bow in it here, but yeah, that looks pretty good. I think it should work just fine for us. Try that. We're gonna pull it out for a second. We have to put this pin in. Is what goes through the uh, to the clutch arm, and then this clip holds the. Uh, Clutch your arm in. Um, if ever you're in the mood to buy tools, uh, buy yourself a pair of these. Handiest thing in the world to have, you know, really long um, needle nose pliers. Um, they come in good for just about everything. So, okay, get that in. So, what we can do now. Is we'll take our hill holder cable. There's a hole in that pin that that shaft goes through with the cable. Put this down in like that. Get another horseshoe clip that holds this cable into right there on the top. Okay, that's in. So it looks like it's bent a little bit. Really. Looks fairly straight. Now we got our special little barrel nut. I'm gonna go get a little bit of lubricant um, and put on our nut. We want everything to work as freely as possible. Okay, so we've given that a pretty good spray. Got to be a little bit of a contortionist sometimes. I'm going to come around the other side. It'll probably be easier for you guys to see. Coming in like that, like this. The rubber, rubber boot here on our uh, clutch fork is torn. Pretty common. You find that a lot. That's uh, Nut on. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I find it makes it a little bit easier, is I'll take a uh, There, I think that'll fit in. That'll fit in there a little bit better. Okay. Oh yeah. There you go. All right, and we hold our hold the other end of this. Sometimes, I mean, this particular cable, you know, is old, been around for a while. And the threads aren't all that they could be. I mean, if you had a new cable, I mean, you could thread this right on with your fingers, but. You have to make sure you have that special nut because it does, it's machined on the end of it where it goes right around the, uh, now, how do you adjust these, you say? Well, what I do, you adjust the clutch first. Um, I 
I'll get these uh, snugged up, but I, I leave the hill holder a little loose. Um, sometimes you gotta go back and forth with the two cables a little bit until you get everything where you want it. I like to have about a uh, half an inch of, uh, well, actually about an inch of free play in the clutch pedal, That's just where I like it. It's important to have a little free play. You don't want to have, ever want to have no free play in your clutch because that means it's not, it has the possibility of not actually release it. And you loosen this jam nut right there. Loosen this nut here. This is our clutch adjustment here on the cable. See how that feels from in the car. I think we could use a little bit, a little bit more free play in this pedal. So let's loosen this up just a tad. Try it again. Free play feels good. Okay. I like that right there. Now, I gotta reposition you guys because I'm gonna be moving the car a little bit. After I get the free play where I kind of like it, it's in the range of where it feels good to me. Um, now I'll take, and I'm gonna start it up. I like my clutch to start adjusting at about halfway through the, or start engaging rather, about halfway through the uh, pedal travel. And then, still have my free play at the top. That's just the way that I like to have the clutch adjusted. And after we do that, we'll adjust the hill holder to it. So I'm gonna reposition you guys once again. Okay, so let's see how this is gonna work for us. Okay, so the clutch feels good. I like the way the clutch engages. So let's take and uh, we'll lock down the lock nut on our clutch adjustment. We're done with that. And now we'll adjust our hill holder. I think it's still a little loose. Which means it won't en engage at the same time that the clutch disenga is uh, disengaging. Still 
on the loose side. You got to bring it up and hold a little tension on it. guys over here a little bit. We got a nice little rollback right here. We can give it a try. Actually, uh, that actually feels real good. So, basically, what you want to do is you want to adjust that cable so that you probably saw as you're letting the clutch out, that's when the brake is releasing after you set it. You want to kind of time the two of them together, if you will, so they kind of simultaneously one goes off, one goes on type thing. So, I'll bring you in here, see if we can get a little bit better view of what we got. Come on, focus. There you go. So that's it all on there. And that's it on this end here. That's the way the cable goes in. The cable routes up around. And like I say, it is the uh, it is the return for the clutch pedal. So, I mean... It's like a dual function thing, um, pretty important in operation. So, uh, you know, if you got one of these things and your clutch ain't working quite, quite right, take a look at the hill holder. Um, chances are pretty good the cable's not adjusted properly. Um, a lot of people I've run across don't understand how to do it. Um, it's very simple, as you can see. Once again, it's something really anybody can do, as long as you just take a few minutes and figure it out, and away you go. So I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm going to stop talking. Um, I think maybe what we'll do next is we'll uh, pull that uh, tow bar receiver off the front of this and see what we got underneath that. Until then, take it easy. <laughs>